So this right here is my impressions of PT and as well as my hopes for the future game that's supposed to be based off what this is. This is technically a tech demo for the real game that I'll go over to in a moment. But first, PT means playable trailer, or playable in the sense where you interact with it, you're able to do things. So the game doesn't have any explanation what you're supposed to do. You wake up in a dark room with two cockroaches making out or whatever, they're pretty much fucking. You know, transmitting each other's uh, eggs of sorts. So basically you wake up to that, you wake up, you walk around, you're like, what the hell's going on here? So you basically wander around aimlessly figuring out what you're supposed to do. There's like this eerie atmosphere. The atmosphere I thought was pretty solid throughout this entire experience. I was confused the entire time though because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So it felt old school where it had this very linear feel to it though because most games as like this were practically linear you know you didn't have too much progression behind it other than solving puzzles once you solved the puzzles then the progression forwarded through so this entire game was just like that so they're trying to give you that old school feel to it a lot of people didn't like the first person mode to it though they're all bitchy about that which obviously whatever so you're walking around, you're trying to figure out what the hell's going on, you hear this radio playing, and it's talking about murders. So you're like, okay. So it's giving you hints. So if you've played the original first Silent Hill, the second and third, or fourth, whatever else, there's always that similar thing, some guy's guilty or some girl's guilty of something, and you know, you ha you're pretty much atoning for your sins kind of situation. That's generally what this is the entire Silent Hill Silent Hill series is about in a nutshell. But, however, figuring out what exactly you did is what the entire objective was. So with this demo, the only thing you're really given is sounds and things. And you look around the atmosphere and you guess what in the environment you did. And that's generally what I was doing the entire time, was figuring out and putting the pieces together. So as this, the radio is explaining it, some guy with a shotgun, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, huh. So I'm not going to say too much more past that point, because again, if no one has played it yet, they have a PlayStation 4 and are able to access this, then I implore you, go ahead and try it. So, however, you know, this is practically already news by now, so I'm not really ruining anything for you, is it's a trail, at the, as you complete it, as I did, you practically get rewarded with the following, a trailer for the new Silent Hill game, which is supposed to be a reboot envisioned in by Kojima and some guy's name I cannot pronounce. So you get rewarded with that, and the gentleman, which is like, I, I quite frankly don't watch The Walking Dead, so if you're upset because I don't, that, that's your own problem, but however, the guy that has a crossbow in that, and again, he's made infamous by also uh, the, do the Boondog Saints, which he's known for that as well. And some other movie which had involved like a scarecrow or something like that. And I don't remember what the hell the name of that one was either. So again, very vague memory with that. So basically you have that gentleman there. And he's supposed to be the live action protagonist to the new Silent Hill game. Which I think is a good choice. I mean, he's very popular at the moment, especially with a lot of horror films. Including his uh, surreal drama action film, The Boondock Saints. So you have this gentleman here who's going to be the main protagonist, which you can tell off the bat, every woman in their freaking, their vaginas are going to come running to this game. So, <laughs> you know, you have that fandom there. I mean, I respect the guy for what he does. I just don't follow him as often because, I, again, I don't really watch The Walking Dead. I, that's just how I am. So, yeah. I mean, the, the direction it's going, I think, is great. And the fact that the game is random, at least with this demo was a great thing, you know, this whole, it didn't quite be the same thing as everyone else is playing, which is great. Again, I love the whole roguish style to it. I do hope in the, when the game Silent Hill does come out, which I believe this is going to be called self-titled as a reboot, they are, I hope they keep that approach where it's going to be like a roguelike, where it's random, where it's, I mean, granted the same town and everything that you're going to be seeing, but just keep it so that way the puzzles and everything are random, where it's not the same, so that way the experience is different for everybody else, which would be a great idea. Replayability up the fucking wazoo. So, could this be a completely innovative idea? Mm, yes and no. I mean, for survival horror games as such as uh, games like 
Alone in the Dark or Resident Evil or anything else like that, it will revive the genre. I mean, granted, there's other games out there already, such as First Person or Random 2, but they're not quite the caliber as Silent Hill. Because Silent Hill, Resident Evil, and Alone in the Dark, the 1 through 3, all had their own interesting as well as, you know, defining elements to themselves. While Resident Evil 1 didn't quite have the most solid storyline, it was still a very good game to play. Same with Part 2, which is Part 2 of Resident Evil is my favorite game in that series, next to 4. So, you basically have this element I was seeing, and it was just something that stuck in my brain, which is how random it all was, which was great. So, I'm going to keep on talking about that to the end of time, because I do hope they keep that element in the game. Obviously, they keep it third person and keep us that way. They have that old school feel to it when you're playing through the game as it comes out. Would it be something I'll be purchasing as the game comes out? Absolutely. You know, it'll be one of the games on the list to get because it looked like something would actually interest me as long as it keeps a couple compounds that didn't quite ruin the series when it came to the later games for Silent Hill. I mean, I played the original and I played part two. I thought they were both great. So... If you give me a game that's like the the new ones that came out, I'd be quite depressed. So, again, I hope they don't go towards that direction. Like The Room and everything else. Some people like those ones, which all the power to them, enjoy it. But, eh, they, I hope they keep it old school, like the original games were. Keep that, su that surprise factor in there, too. I mean, yeah, there were cheap scares in the demo for uh, PT, but... It just it scared me at points, too. Like, I'll admit, it scared me, me jump out of my fucking seat a couple times. Um, you're inside the bathroom, and I'm not going to say too much with that. You hear baby cries, and I'll just leave it at that. So, again, it just it was a genuinely good atmosphere. It was fantastic. It scared me at points, which was good. Because if, if I'm not scared, I'm not impressed. You know, that's how it is. Like, I mean, I'm kind of playing through it like, oh, yeah, it was all right. But no, it actually did scare me, so it was good. But... Anyway, I'll let the rest of this demo play out for an uh, extra minute, then I'll close out this video. But anyway, take it easy. Thank you all for watching, and touch my nipples. And, yeah. Basically, if you notice, the progression of the game is pretty much it resets itself over and over with the doors and all that. Didn't think I would forget to mention that, but I kind of wanted to mention it at the end. That was pretty clever, but at the same time got kind of redundant, but eh, whatever. Touch my nipples.